Kane from Garage 11 and here we are, the very first Garage 11 boxcast. <laughs> We're doing it. We've got it here. We've made it. It was pretty wild probably, what, about 10 minutes ago. I think this was all going pretty south, pretty fast. <laughs> so what we're going to do here, we're going to bring... All of you guys, anyone who wants to listen, we're going to give you insights into what's happening in current motocross, retro motocross, what we've got going on in the workshop, product reviews, different things. All sorts of stuff. It's going to be fun. So hopefully we'll be able to bring you some really good and interesting, engaging information. You won't get any smarter. You won't learn anything. You might go backwards. You might go backwards, but this is where we are. We are are. are dirt bike riders and we all have hit the ground way too many times. (laughs) To my left, the one and only Mr. Marshall Smith. How are you, dude? Shit house. Shit house? (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm good. You're good? This is going to be... Sink or swim. <laughs> this is going to be make or break. It's going to be so experience. you've been a big part of Garage Eleven for probably the beginning. Really, you and I have sort of. Well, I basically started it all <laughs> back in 1950 when I was born. Um, no, 1950. That's probably pretty <laughs> accurate, isn't it? Um, We're not going <laughs> to. There's probably a few people that don't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. yeah, so it all sort of started out meeting you through building an RM250. Yep. Um, we spoke about guns. that on one of our Behind the we Build did, episodes on YouTube. Um, and it's sort of just not just been a business, it's been a massive friendship. Yep. Um, and I spoke to Gozo behind the scenes before this even happened about you. Um, and you have no idea about this, but the whole Garage 11 thing is him. Like... He's the main man. I, the, I'm part of it, yeah, but the main part is Kane. Like he's the one that does majority of the work. He's a well, pretty much does all the work. I just pretend that I do a lot of the work. I did nothing. <laughs> You're the emotional. I did absolutely nothing. You're today. the emotional support Labrador. Um, At least you do something. I just drop my mic. <laughs> yeah, he should yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> rocks up. Um, yeah. So I mean, the big star behind all of this is is Kane, yeah, and definitely. for everything that. I have in regards to dirt bikes and parts and this and that and whatever. And it even travels across to our friend circle, Gozo, and anybody else that knows us, it's very close. For those of you who know us. All of the the contact, well, majority of the contacts and everything that happens is because of this guy, not not because of me, because of him. He, he's the, oh, he's I, the I, main guy. I think there's a, 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 you know, I'm not going to strike each other's balls too much here, but <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> I think um, a lot of it as well, like I'm about as socially adequate as a house brick. <laughs> so it's sort of good having someone who has some sort of knowledge. I mean, being a mechanic, being social isn't my my forward skill set. Yeah. Um, yeah. So having someone like yourself come in and, and, you know, and be a friend as well. And it's like, this is all going wrong. What do we do? What do I do? You know, having that support has, yeah. has been massive yeah. for well, the business growth. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, the work happens. Hmm. Because him. Yeah. Like um, me and me and Marshall would talk about a podcast and kind of talk shit about it, but Kane's the one that like He's the one that makes he it. He drove happen. it, man. Like yeah. he said we're gonna do it on Monday. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll come over to the, the studio and we'll have a chat. And yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden we got the barrels out and we're, we're on. on. And the so, microphones that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're recording on phones, not actually here. <laughs> um but yeah. I think it's been pretty good. Yeah. To my left, yeah. right? Which one's this? Right. This You're one, right. the camera's like, yes. whatever it is. James. Now I know why we can't turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. James Gozo, like I said, James has been, or Gozo, sorry, it's not James, it's Gozo. Yeah, we'll it's Gozo. Gonzo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, has been a big part of our friendship circle and a big part of um, Garage 11 as well from hanging out, riding, advice. I know you're a big part of Easywell, your old man is yeah. Easyway um, yeah. Financing. Is that the correct? Yes. Yeah, so so we're in the finance world. We look after salary packaging for not for profits. Um, doing a bit of giving back. We do innovative leasing and we're going to go into asset finance as well. So, you know, over the course of these podcasts, we'll start bringing up that. Um, you're big in the fitness. You've done a lot of fitness stuff as well. Your yeah. background is a lot of yeah. fitness. Like, that's you're why you're as wide as being a meatball. Yeah. <laughs> you're the meatball of the group. But yeah, no, when I was 15, I was... I think so last 40, week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was 15, I was 47 kilos. Like yep. Pretty much anemic. Yep. Um, and then started going to the gym. 
started bodybuilding, competed, won a few shows, got a tattoo by Marshall, that's how I met him. And I had a bike at the time. Like I've, I've ridden bikes since I was three, but I had a massive off period. Um, and then actually, you know, not, that's not that uncommon. It's what do not, people do? I did. I went through a, a big off period. And I think maybe it's because I'm young. I thought that I was the only person that had time away from bikes, but the more I talk about it with dudes, they, yeah. everyone's kind of had that. Yeah, I did life. the exact same thing as yeah, well. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, getting sitting in the chair with Marshall. We, I had a 450, and I had a Sarah 450, and you know he was talking about bikes, and I was like, oh, shit, man. Like, this is... I love that shit. I want to get back. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know what I was doing. So then from that point on, man, it's just been um flat stick with these boys and that's the good thing about marshall is he he has this innate ability to bring people together mm. you know like you and i might not generally have hung around if it wasn't yeah. for that sort of catalyst same with aiden from cruise tune he's a he's the fourth mm. member of our of our tribe um yeah. the my generation we are live a lot of like people are watching i don't even know if we're getting any feedback or comments let's just let it run <laughs> yeah, while yeah. Right, run free it. let's right, see what happens run free <laughs> run free yeah, we'll, we'll leave it <laughs> Yeah, no. Nah, so that's a bit about me. Um, just but easy yeah. way is growing. Like it's a fairly, it's a very large yeah, company. Man, we've we've it's, been around since '07. Um, my old man started it. Um, currently overseas, so yeah, sort of helping out, looking after it as well. Yeah, uh, it's just yeah, it's just continued to grow. It's been really good. We're a company that's built on um, like ethics and morals in our industry. When you're in a in the public sector, I guess it's like every you've got to be. It's hard though. Yeah, man, you're that's... competing against you know some pretty cutthroat people, but we like to stand by our morals. Yeah, I guess that kind of just translates across you know the friendships we make and stuff. Not to get soppy and stuff. Yeah, no, I guess I <laughs> yeah, guess too, it's like, you know, it's we're all, yeah. all yeah, we all kind of line up in the same sort of ethics and morals as, as each other, and yeah, it kind of just worked out. So we've just been riding flat out. These guys, I mean. Of the three of us, I'm not the guy that's going to give you mechanical advice. Like, I took my swing arm apart for the first time in my life, and I feel like I'm a fucking mechanic at this point because <laughs> um, I feel mechanic. pretty accomplished at the moment. But no, like, these boys, you know, they take the piss out of me, but it's in a good way. You know, I've learned a lot of shit with bikes because of them. And um, then there's learned a lot of shit that looks bad on bikes because Marshall does not <laughs> hold his tongue if he, he does a bike, bike snob. In the way. Yeah, he's a bike snob. So. I think that's the good thing about dirt bikes as well is it's – I mean, modern bikes are a little different, but the basic mechanics of it, you know, you can learn, you can get a really good feeling on on how to, to work on something mechanical that doesn't have all of the components of a car. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I've always been a big believer in. And it's, it is exciting. It's, it's real grassroots sort of mechanics. And, you know, like you said, you know, you learn it's, it can go south, but it can also be... Yeah, pull it apart. And it's what's, what's, and you fall off. what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Bike shuts off in the air over a triple. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're fine. You've got to get over the triple first. Trip off to Sick Bay for a couple of days. Yeah, we know someone course. that had a trip off to Sick Bay recently, yeah, we don't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I would like to do is thank a couple of the companies that are helping us sort of get through and, and build and grow as a company. Um, race Fuels Distribution is a big one. Elf Race Fuels, we're working with them at the moment. We're all on their fuel, on a test fuel that they're um, working on at the moment, which is going to be really good. We were testing that out on the weekend out at Cruzix Ride Park. Um, we've got some good results with that in both the two and four stroke bikes. Smells so good. yeah, oh, dude, it smells unreal. <laughs> um, and that's the thing. So it's hopefully we'll... Um, the fuel that we're testing is hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be able to be homologated with MA. So hopefully we'll be able to bring that to a competition racing point of view, which we've already had a great deal of feed, uh, feedback. Yeah, I had a lot of guys actually message me on the weekend about it. Um, yeah, since we got involved with it, we've obviously been posting it flat out and, and whatnot. And all these giant drums are popping up everywhere on our posts. Um, and yeah, like I said, a lot of the guys have been messaging me. It's not approved for racing here in Australia just yet. So if hold you do your, hold to, fire. Yeah, hold if fire. you do happen to go get some from race fuels in Dandenong, please don't race with it. I just don't yet. race, so my address I can link it up. <laughs> drop it off. Um, yeah, it's don't, definitely don't, it's don't a race with it yet. It's no. a weekend warrior fuel though. And yes. that's what I think yep. race fuels we'll touch on this a little bit later, but just quickly, race fuel is probably the biggest performance upgrade you can do to any motorcycle, right? Right well Right off the bat. Right off the bat. You just put it in, the bike goes. And goes. And that's the beautiful thing about Elf is not a lot of – some race fuels you're going to have to retune and rejet and people are always scared of it. Yeah. You're paying $16, $17 a litre for some other brands that are on the market at the moment. Yeah. Um, whereas Elf, 
is going to be around the 695 a litre mark, which sounds like a lot, but when you're only going through small quantities of it every couple yeah. of weeks, it, it, it adds up. It doesn't add up. It's a 10 litre jerry, which you're not going to go through in a day. Or I know we don't go through it. Because we, we, we spend too much time talking. Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't go through it in a day, but I mean like 60 bucks for me personally to know that one, I'm getting good throttle response. Two, my engine's running nice and clean and cool and just the peace of mind of you know not having all the crap and whatever comes in in standard fuels i mean we ran 98 for forever long and until i met this clown i didn't really care about race fuel a great deal and then we started running it in our two strokes and my biggest thing which actually made me switch to it was i've got a gas gas 125 we jetted it whatever whatever and it just had a bog in, in third gear. It would bog for no reason. Like you shift up into third, tiny little bog, and then it'd be, but it was noticeable. As soon as the race fuel went in it, that bog cleared up. And I haven't run that thing on standard race fuel, uh, standard fuel since that day. Yeah. Because I just. It's such a it's, game it's too, changer. Well, it's risky as well. Like you have that bog in third, you know. Like in third's a pretty, in third's a pretty. You're not going slow. No. Um, I mean, well, on a 125, you can't go slow. But <laughs> on a 125, you feel like you're going yeah, you fast. Like you going sound fast, like it. But yeah, but a lot of jumps, man, it. like you really think about like Australian tracks. Like you can hit most jumps in third. Third, yeah. And like you get a little bit of bog at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and that was always a big thing with those gone. 125s. Yeah. Completely gone. You don't yeah. have a 450 grunt to go whoop, whoop, whoop and get yeah, you out exactly. of it. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's all over. But yeah, so help. Motul is another one. We just started working with them. They make a fantastic product. We're going to be doing a couple of product reviews for them coming up in the next week or so. Uh, we're helping out uh, Mr. Ethan Maywald. Marigold. Marigold. Um, <laughs> A.K.A. Marigold. Marigold. Mini Marigold. Mini Marigold. <laughs> yep. On his uh, quest for Hatter glory. So we're helping him prep his bike, his gasser. So we're going to be... With Motul have supplied us with a nice little service kit to begin with on that one. So we're going to review some of those products. Um, King Chrome Tools, they always make a good quality tool. We're doing a little bit with them in the background at the moment. So it's a little bit early days on that one, but that should be really exciting. Um, Cruise Tune, the boys from there always help us out. Um, they've always been fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, look, it's just going to be one of those things. But... Um, that's sort of it. I mean, a little bit about myself. I've been a mechanic now for 15 years. I was a motor mechanic by trade. I've done a various other bits and pieces throughout that time. Um, no, most notably within the industry is V8 supercars. So I was a V8 supercar mechanic for a couple of years, which is a, a hard gig for those who have been in it. Uh, a little bit of GT3 racing prior to that. Dirt bikes my whole life. My dad was very, very prominent. Um, big Russ. Big Russ. He wasn't a racer. He wasn't an enduro man. He was just the ultimate weekend warrior. And, <laughs> like and the most are. pedantic person <laughs> in the, on, the no, on the planet. Yes. He yeah. is Captain Pedantic. Um, that's why our bikes always got maximum resale value. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's a little Not bit much of... different from old <laughs> Seven no. hours on the shop. Yeah, so, yeah let's go. Yeah, yeah. 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 So no, that's a little bit about me. I mean, there's probably a little bit more. Um, I can't remember. I don't need to. I've got a wife that can remember all the stuff that I need to remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah all right we're going to sort of jump in we're going to have a little bit first of all just have a little bit of a chat about current events within our industry within our sport it's a little bit um you know it's always good to chat about these sorts of things straight up it's good it, it's it's a because it is you know we are a retro based company but it is good to talk about motor. we're a motocross based company let's let's face it like we do a lot of restoration and stuff but motocross new old whatever yeah. is our passion as long as it's not electric we're good to go <laughs> uh, i'm probably going to make some friends Start there but that's quite all right <laughs> yeah um first of all the biggest one congratulations to chase sexton for winning his first supercross title that was pretty pretty wild and i think almost people tried to take the yeah, wind out of his sails i've seen the memes already there yeah. was one the other day and it was like a little box and Eli Tomac handing this little box, which was a present to Chase for the motocross season. I was just like, 
Man. Oh, man. Bro, it's a 17 round season. He if won. you could Dude. go 17 <laughs> rounds, if you can, for us, if you can jump one triple once, you're my hero. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, private How are you? Either. You're like the king of saying, man, I wish I could just hit a rhythm section. section. Yeah, <laughs> just two to perform once. And once, I'd be it. I'd call it a day. In my opinion with that thing, man, like, I. I Hated T- Tomac for years. Like yeah, I was a Howie, I just didn't like him. And yeah. then on a Yami, I started like. I think his personality came out. He got the, the collar taken off him. He can actually talk, but like Chase deserved it in my opinion. Like hundred percent. He, he, he if he didn't stack in those races, dude, he would have smoked everyone by about fifty but points. Here, here's the thing, though. Right, sorry to cut you off. Here's the thing, though. Everyone says Chase was gifted it. No, Tomac made a mistake that cost him it. Yeah. Yeah. Cooper Webb made a mistake that cost him it. Everybody knows my stance on Cooper Webb. Yeah, well, <laughs> we all know. That. But these guys made that mistake. Chase didn't make that mistake. No, he no. made mistakes, but he rode through it. He got yeah. through but it to the end. Also, like the clear cut, Chase straight up beat Toma in yeah. rounds. Like it's not like he came he second was, in two Dude, it wasn't a Dungey. Like, hear me out, we're probably going to smoke for it. But like, Dungey was never the fastest guy, but he won so Mr. many titles yeah, because he didn't eat shit and stay out. Yeah, exactly. So, like, right. if you're not going to talk shit about Dungey, then you can't, can't talk really shit about, about, about sex. Well, yeah, like, you know, like, Chase, quali- his qualifying speed as well. When you look at his out and out brutal force, it's, it's wild. Happen. Yeah, when he doesn't tuck the front, he's <laughs> the fastest <laughs> in the field. <laughs> what is it? Qualified top three in 21 events in succession. Hmm. That's out That's of control. Wild. That's wild speed. That's you know wild. what I mean? You know what's even more wild? It was like the last few rounds, Jet was quicker by like. A That's. Little- in timed qualifying, dude, that's fried. You're on half the bike size. That's out of control. That's stupid. That is that out is of control. Dumb. Jet's going to be fast. Jet's going to be super fast. Jet already is fast. Like on a 450, I, I don't think... Teach you, you, you get... <laughs> <laughs> you teach him how to tuck the front of the bike. His teammate will talk to <laughs> Well, I mean, like, Jet is going to get to 450. We saw it in Des Nations, right? Yeah. Jet's going to get there. I don't think there's going to be a transition period. You know how everyone goes through that teething? Stu yeah. went through it. Everyone went out, though, through it. Right? Jet rides more mature than Chase. Yeah, I think like so. if you, I know the competition's different. It's not like from first to fifteenth, they're factory dudes. So I just like, figured yeah. out I got a hole in my shit. Yeah, nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, the whole podcast is when you shit because I've got a hole in my shit. <laughs> no, like if you think about the way Jet rides. I think he rides more mature than Chase. And he doesn't ride Jet super takes- on the pipe. So you put him on a 450, he kind of like he's built for it. Well, see, Jet Jet will take a second. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to make... But he never used to be, though. He need to take a second. <laughs> 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 who's, like, who's it going to be? Uh, Chase Sexton. And, Chase Sexton. Yeah, yeah well, Chase Sexton <laughs> yeah. and Jet. Chase is on Honda, and though. Ferrandis, maybe. Ferrandis, maybe. Ferrandis, maybe. Wait, 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 what, wait, who else who? is there? Who else, is in the, who else is in the 450s this year? Bro, yeah. Jeff Walker's in the... Is he? Is he Half right? the field's yeah, Jeff Walker's a part, bro. That's why I got the bank. My God. <laughs> oh, my God, Jeff. Oh, man. I mean, look, it's it's going to be... like You know what's the saddest thing about this? This comes from me because I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, oh, as really? everyone knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. I'm surprised he's not wearing like a 1990 box jersey <laughs> right now. Dude, he watches Supercrosses that are older than me. He can't even watch them, man. He watches the ones that are that pixel age. Just boxes in his head. can't even see him. He's starting to use 20 pixels of different yeah. colours. Yeah. Oh, it's an 85 inch TV with 20 pixels across it. <laughs> so it's see. true. It's true. Now I've lost my train of thought. No, <laughs> outdoors. I feel like outdoors really gets left out of it. Everyone's out. Like it's no, just no one gives a shit anymore. But it's, it's the sucks. more it's out. That Even is the, the sport. Riders don't want to do it anymore. No, that's, I know. That's that's, that's, that's because, like I think in some time is going to be big. I reckon Not World Supercross that. has a lot of validity to it. I genuinely think it's a good thing. I know the very first. I know you're a little bit off it at the moment, but. I think the first one, the atmosphere going, I mean, in Australia, we have trouble pulling it off. I don't think we do. I think we do. I Oz, think, wait, wait, Oz Supercross, when they decide not to fucking televise it, what do you think Australian Supercross is going to do? Yeah. Like, it sucks here, but the yeah, World I Supercross get it. here was mad. Like, yeah, I, look, the World Supercross, I just think the track, we could have, we need bigger tracks, right? We need... Let's, let's hire out the G. Yeah. Who cares yeah. about everything else that's <laughs> going on in the G? Let's get, let's get dirt into the G. Why would we want to watch Supercross in Geelong? I don't know oh, how many man. years ago it was. Was it windy Two, and raining, or was it windy? Uh, it was before, before <laughs> COVID. Yeah, they had the whole stadium. They used about this much of it. Yeah, it did. Like, sorry, was it? No, it wasn't Geelong. Where was? It? Oh no, no yeah, yeah, it was Geelong. 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 Yeah, it was Geelong. And they had no, like, they didn't use the entire field at all. They used like this tiny bit of the field. Mm. They made the tiniest track, 
And I feel like it's the same deal with like, like don't get me wrong, Supercross is unreal. Watching it here is great. The only issue I have is, and not to sound like a wank, but I've, I've been to America to watch Vegas yeah. and it was wild. It's, a, it's, it's hard though. It's it. an economy of scale though. We've got a tiny yeah. stadium. We've got five people that live in Australia compared to what's <laughs> yeah, over know, there. Do you know, know what I mean? Like just, it makes it harder. It's, it's hard too. But you, from what you're saying, they had the space. We've got guys like Pro Tracks and Cash, all those guys that are building these tracks. Mm. They can put together good tracks, sure. interesting tracks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's do it. Let's make it more exciting. The problem is Geelong. Yeah. you got to get there. Well, the you money, know what I mean? The money side of it as well, obviously. Like, We're not going to pull in. Ticket sales are nothing. thousand people. No. Well, like, he, he, we won't, but is Easy Way going to step up and sponsor, <laughs> a, sponsor <laughs> around no, this year? Or? Sponsor young Callum Dyes. That's as far as he's sponsored. <laughs> um, oh, you sponsor me. I've got a three hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like, I, I just think that the marketing they do is shit. And, like, hear me out. There's a lot more money in F1. I'm not going to compare it. But the Drive to Survive series that they did for that, mm. the amount of... So I'm going to get heat. Wankers that all of a sudden would like uh, F1 fans crawl over grass, glass yeah, but that's to watch. They watch that F1 series on but, Netflix. But that's what Dude, I'm saying. That, that's what I'm that's saying. saying. If you have F1, saved F1, yeah, in my and opinion. like if World Supercross, I mean, this is fucking gonna go nowhere. But like if World Supercross wanted to like bump shoulders and get some people to like excited for the sport, not people that were gonna go because they don't do Supercross in Wales or in Melbourne. Yeah, you got to do that kind of shit. To like, you got to you got to go. People want drama. Get, yeah, that, and F one is but nothing they need but to understand it because, like, the way I see it, and that's bias. Everyone watching is gonna say, think the same thing. Motocross and Supercross is fucking nuts, dude. Like, what insane? What, no, what even like? No, what even we do, and we're slow as shit. Like, if a random person watches it, they're like, "Fuck, that's yeah, wild." I, I, but then, like, yeah, yeah. you don't promote it in a space that people that don't ride are gonna give a shit. So then we can't complain. That, I mean, we can't complain. It's not the ones that well, we are complaining. Yeah, yeah, we are complaining. We're, 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 we're actually I'm Italian. All I do is complain. <laughs> and eat like, carbohydrates. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I just think it needs that. And, like, if World Supercross really wanted to, like, really pump it up, the only downside is that the teams in the US are reluctant to let people ride I think there's a lot of politics going on there's a lot of which is what the world super duper motocross or whatever they've got going on at the moment is super duper super super duper mega motocross karate whatever like (laughs) (laughs) super duper taekwondo motocross (laughs) whatever they've got going on over there and that's fine you know I'm glad they're going back to the Coliseum me being a traditionalist I cannot wait to see bikes Back at the Coliseum, personally. I'm scared if I say I don't know what the Coliseum looks like. You're like back. You here. just stay over there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that. That. I mean, going back to the original, what we were saying, you know, it's going to happen a lot. I know. It is. <laughs> I think Chase was well and truly deserving of yeah. this championship. It is his championship. There's no asterisk next to it. Nothing that he was the last man standing yeah, yeah. in this battle. I agree. I'm Anyone sure. that says it, he didn't deserve, and it was handed to him. You know, doesn't get the sport. Yeah. You know, the yeah. other thing that people don't mention, like, and this is coming out of left field. If you looked at Barsham when he was on like a good run, he was running like the fastest times in the main. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, he was fast as shit too, but he wasn't consistent and crashed at different races. Mm-hmm. And then I was, I think I mentioned it to you or you. Um, if you look back at some of the previous years that Tomac threw titles away, no one gave a shit then. No. no. Like he's done, like I love Tomac. I'm not bashing him. It's happened before. And it's a freak accident. Like, dude, oh, you're riding a dirt bike. That's and like, Shit happens, dude. You know That's what I love happen. about it though? Now it's like, oh, the bike's too fast. Oh, no, it's There's not. nothing to fucking do about bikes no. being too fast. You think Tony Maker explodes a 450 in the 20 minute yeah. race of Daytona and thinks the bike's too fast? Talking, oh, the sport's not safe enough. Like, okay, yeah, then it's not. It, it is what it is. But, like, going back to what you just said, like, Tony Mac fucked up. Yeah. It happens. Plain and simple. And, dude, you can't say extreme sports are too dangerous. Like, I'm a <laughs> massive MMA fan, like, huge. Like I've fought. Yeah, it shows. Like, it's, <laughs> no, but like when someone gets their leg broken by a leg kick, we don't go, oh, we need to pat up their shins when they fight. We need, it's to, like, we need oh, to stop kicking. This is part of the <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude, it's a part, you sign up for it. Like 100%. no one, I feel like not, I mean, we, there are people that We all dude, know the like, risks. Dude, exactly. yeah. We all know the risks. The bikes are getting faster. What's the Stark Varg now? I agree with they're getting faster, but then... Your stock suspension's better, and then your shafts are better. Hundred percent. The riders better. have leveled up. Exactly. Yeah, look at Moto. If you watch, it, say Moto Academy, for example, mm. if you go back to your prehistoric era, no one had like resources. So what was I in? 
the mega but you're better super yeah. mega super, super, super mega I like the super mega motocross <laughs> story sports <laughs> yeah but back then Edition. what'd you do like buy Dirt Action magazine and then there was some tips there 100% yeah, MC but- was making it look good <laughs> You know what I mean? You put yeah. your you'd put your esky well, like, on your head yeah, and you'd go forward and conquer. Like now, and the best you know, <laughs> off you go. The best example is not lightning quick, but my mate started lightning last year, like Macca. You yeah. know, he no, goes at it. He no, corners Macca do because he yeah. goes down. Smackadoo. But he corners with his feet on the pegs more than I do, and I've ridden since I was three. Yeah. Yeah. But that's so the thing. that's, like that's where the it's next going. generation. So you can't complain about bikes and tracks if people are getting better too. No, no, no. It's not just bikes and tracks have leveled up. I mean, the whole sport has leveled up. Yes, and the risks of leveling up get bigger they get 100%. more F1 cars get faster they yeah. supercars get yeah. faster where, GP bikes get faster and yeah GP bikes look at you. what we're doing is just different right because we're coming off the ground the minute you come off the ground yeah, it's just stuff starts get, it's changing I can't yeah. jump to save myself we all know <laughs> this I like staying on the ground but that's just that's just what it is I mean looking at the last the other thing I want to say is like talking about safety you know, Kenny got a lot of heat when he pulled off you know, people saying, oh, you know, Kenny, Kenny. Kenny's been pretty... Kenny pulled up? Yeah, bro. He... Dude, my man. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, Kenny. how many times did he pull off? What? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like the sport is getting dangerous and... Or not getting dangerous. The sport's getting faster and those bikes are getting faster. You know, you're going to do but a knee. But getting like getting faster? This is my question. Like how long? How many? Do the start... Like we're talking about electric, right? Let's let's talk. Let's, how many let's, years That's 80 been horsepower. Been horsepower for now. Yeah, a while. How many years? They're, what? Since... 2016, 2015? Yeah. Probably. They're not getting any faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah still going. Still going. They're not getting any faster. They're, they're now capped. To like, they haven't gotten any faster. They're just, they're what they were back in yeah. 2015. And here's something, if you listen to a lot of what the pros say with their 450s, they don't like spice them up. No. So no. they could be faster. 100%. The Honda could. could make that thing a fucking fire breathing dragon if they wanted to, yep. but they don't. No. Like, not a lot of riders want it. And you know, it's interesting. The, I, I honestly think the 250s would be harder to ride than their 450s. I would literally... Well, you got to rev them harder. Yeah, we should all get 350s. Look, 350s. Look, I think 350s probably good. I've always said that... There's, what are you there's... talking about? You've never even ridden one because you're a pussy and you won't ride mine. Yeah, because it's... I'm like, hey, you want to ride my bike? bike? No, I'll just stand here and watch you ride mine. Dude, it's got a shovel for a front guard. I can't... Got I'm looking at the front guard. <laughs> I'm looking there. All right. What's Ethan been teaching? But you shouldn't be looking <laughs> yeah, yeah. through the corner, <laughs> through the, corner. the front guard. Here and there is what they call it, or mountain bike guys call it, whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we've got some cool guys coming, I reckon. You know what? One thing is going to be interesting for World Supercross is I didn't realize, but Michael Lessey, I think he should be coming out here on a 300 smoker. He can oh, ride. I think he should app- stay in America. <laughs> <laughs> on like out of the test. How I is think, he? Think, he's still I going. I think Jeff though. Alessi should be like back on the lasers. <laughs> so um, so, yeah, I mean, is Tony coming down as well? I want to see him get involved. <laughs> him and your age. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I mean, he's look. He's only 252, that's wild. Yeah, I think so. I, Dude, I'm putting my house on hold shots. <laughs> Dude, he can... Love him or hate him, he can ride the absolute ass like sports bet every weekend, <laughs> yeah. unless you for the whole shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, that's that's crazy. Justin Brayton. Hang on, so you're gonna put a multi on for a Leslie whole shot and Vince Freezy being a dick. Take someone out to do this race. I mean, Freezy. Yeah, that was trying to pay, oh, then try to pay someone at the line. Yeah, just, just to win the so yeah, when Vince, when Vince comes feel, to Melbourne, if you don't think I'd say it to your face, I absolutely will. Just put it out. I just feel like the G11. I, I I feel like that was a joke that got taken out of context. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was proven. It was really? actually yes. That shit happened. Dude, it happened. You're too busy, you're too stuck in the nineties to know what happened last oh, year. Man. What what where's Emig? Is he <laughs> racing? <laughs> he's coming out. <laughs> Emig's coming out. Dude, this, he, he's been watching Loretta Lynn solo because like Emig still races it. Yeah, I'm um, oh, he's my boy. Years. I'm on it. Maybe I'm on Emig's it. the test rider for Triumph. And not Carmichael. No, no. he still rides a husky. Is he got support from Husky? Yeah, yeah, he's he's on a smoker too. Is he? Yeah, he's yeah, on a he's smoker. Not, I don't know, man. I don't watch those old people anymore. <laughs> Dude, they're the I best people. I just listen to you talk about them all the time. <laughs> um, Justin Brayton. Speaking yeah, of, Justin Brayton. Yuri's bringing him back out. How oh, is yeah. he still... Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, Dude, I know. Podium. It's podium. He, he'll, like, minimum first, like, second or third. But we were a big arena cross. So I feel like a lot Wait, of these... was he... Was he here for yes. WSX? No. no, he wasn't, was he? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. In Melbourne, I mean, not no, obviously. No, no, no. I mean, oh, that's I, right, because it was the, it was the Freezy and Roxon show. Yeah, wasn't it? That's right. That's and that's what hurts World Supercross. 
<laughs> like, just deflated, <laughs> just like, <laughs> and when and when Roxon stubbed his knee, I was like, oh shit, Niggas I don't that. ever want to see Freezy win anything. <laughs> like, dude, I will wow. sign up. Wow. I will somehow this sign is... up and take him out the first. I hate him. Like I said to you, this podcast is either going to send us to the moon <laughs> or, or everything or, goes to shit or end the company. Any the company that the yeah. out, yeah, Elf's going to be out. Yeah, Everyone's going to be yeah. out. Look, I'm not a big. <laughs> Fan of freezing. <laughs> um, you can see we're, we're a bit different. Yeah, 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 I'm not. I think, yeah. Look, I think, I think World Supercross is fantastic because it does give these guys more longevity within the sport, and that's what we've seen a lot. You know, you look at Villapoto, all that sort of stuff. The sport eats these guys oh, alive. Do they have two weeks off? The, the question know. is for me: like, at what point are we going to have? Supercross only riders at all times. Dude, it's going to come. And motocross riders only at all times. Or because I know AJ, like Moto Academy, he wants to start a Supercross training Pro, like facility. program facility for people who want to race Supercross. Not but I mean, there's only so many gates though. How no, many rounds can we have? Yeah, How much can we do? But like, that's what sports. I mean. Like, like, the disciplines, are they going to split the disciplines and then have... I don't know, AMA Pro Supercross and then have WSX and, you know, you can either w- ride World Supercross or ride AMA Supercross. AMA Supercross or, and then is there going to be, well, like how we have Pro Motocross and then there's the European the series, like the GPs. Yeah, like, is yeah. it going to be like that? Is that what's going to happen? Well, I mean, motocross could, is motocross completely fizzling out within... The US. Well, if you is it going to be watch left? Red Bud though. Like, watch, look at the stands. It's not like they're empty. No, they're no, empty. but they're not. But do they have a couple but of those from key? A rider point of yeah, oh, they, yeah, from a rider point of view. Yeah, are they better off having more Supercross rounds and doing some hero oh, motocross God, rounds? More Supercross. You want to put them through? Mate, more. they're going through World Super Duper Karate Motocross. They're going through <laughs> World Supercross. They're going through AMA <laughs> Supercross already. Do you know I, what I mean? Like, I do we have a couple like, of key hero motocross rounds? The big, big ones. You know, you know what they should do? Your like South my opinion, your red my opinion, shorten Supercross is 12 rounds and then you Super Duper Mega Super Mega Cross. See, I just still don't even know what the hell happens with this. this no, super no, no. Mega he's qualified for the playoffs. Yeah, I don't even know. Like, cool. We're, Thanks, we're watching yeah. basketball. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Ricky. Look what, I don't, but, I, yeah, but yeah, like, what point though, are we going to be our own sport just, though? Let's get rid of the playoff sort of thing. We're our own sport being yeah, out of it. Dude, like, like my opinion, it's too, if you have to like set up your bike that different, they're two different sports. Yeah, like, I think so. It, I just, I, it, maybe we'll get to that point, but it just depends. Like money at the end of the day talks. And would these, you say that bullshit walks? I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to get up and walk again. No, but like there's so much money with these teams like HRC. I don't ever see them going, okay, Chase, off you go to World Supercross. Because yeah. I, no, I don't. But is that I the twilight know, part of everyone's see, career? I don't know. I don't want it to be that. I don't know if, like, say Honda HRC, they make money per Honda sale in America. Yeah. Because my opinion is like, well, if you're sending Chase around the world, then Hondas are going to sell everywhere around the world. Yeah. But there must be something there that they're like. Mm-mm. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I feel like there's a lot of politics. There's a lot of that sort of stuff because what they've got to realize is, yes, the US is has traditionally been their biggest market share and it always will be their biggest market share, right? It's an American sport yeah, and that's where it is. Yeah, American yeah. based. And I think, is it like these Asian countries? Like the, I'm trying to think. My brain's not Like working. Indonesia and stuff. Yeah, like Indonesian. Yeah. That, it's, it's I'm pretty sure it's massive in Indonesia. Yeah, but, and that's the thing is like, since the since social media has happened, motocross has, and supercross and super duper mega whatever is going to be big, right? Super duper mega whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> super duper mega whatever. <laughs> it's going to be big and you've got to give it to everyone. Yeah. You know, these guys have to, I think they have to be shared around. There's good money in it for them on the, on the World Supercross stage. Those guys are doing a great job when it comes to supporting them. So why not let them come out? Why have this political infighting between the two that prevents the fans? Money. Yeah, I get it. Money. I get it. Money. In the in the perfect world. Yeah, but it was just like what happened with Cooper Webb when he was meant to come over for WSX. Yeah. So that, and I'm pretty sure I had this conversation with you when it happened. He was told that he wasn't allowed to come over that KTM wouldn't do anything for him. And it has to be looked at from an employer's point of view. He's been hired to do this job here. Yeah. yeah. And now he's like, 
oh, but now I also want to do this job over here for this person. But yeah. if I get hurt doing this job for this person, I'm, I, can't do, I can't do that. But you still have to pay me all my money. Yeah, yeah. No. Like you'd be well, pretty pissed and, as an employer. And that's what I mean. Like you look at it, yeah, it's a sport, but it is a business at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, you can't just, yeah, it sounds good to let. I feel like there could be a little bit more, like there's got, to, there's got to be a little bit more, you know, do the AMA and the World Supercross rounds blend together? So yeah. it becomes a, you in trouble. No, nah, Bubs. All yeah. oh, right. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, or even if you want to head off, if you've got stuff to do or whatever, like, yeah, you know yeah, I mean, we'll sort it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. All right. So let's have a look. Current workshop stuff we've got going on at the moment. We've got a few. Nothing. We're closing up. Close. <laughs> we sold, <laughs> sold everything. Pod- Everything's gone. Pod- <laughs> We're out. We're out. Garage 11, closing down. We've got a couple of CR500s in at the moment. Pretty cool builds. Uh, we've got a 93 for one of our customers, and that's. That's going to be cool. Like it's starting to come together. That was a big frame repairs is on that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bit where when I say he does everything, I literally have no idea what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> I go in, I see the bikes, I'm like, that Man. one's white, <laughs> yeah. that one's red. That's the one with all the plastics on it with nothing really yeah. in it at the moment. Yeah, right. It's got yep. forks and a swinger. Okay, cool. Yeah, that, now I, know, I know which one. That's, that's, that's going to be pretty cool. Like yeah, that, that's, that 97 is like the closest to my age of any bike. That's restored. frightening. Yeah. That we is get frightening. it, man. You're a puppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like CR 500s are still fairly popular. They sort of guys want them. Guys struggle to hold on to them though. Sometimes when you see them at the track, I'm a one two five guy. A lot of guys doing AF stuff as well. I don't know, dude. I I don't know how those things grind. I don't grind like terribly. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I've I've had the opportunity to ride a couple of them. The AF. I've ridden an AF, which near fucking rattled my arms off. (laughs) Yeah, I did. I rode a mate's bike, actually. Um, this is many years ago. Uh, I think it's a 2013 AF 500. Did one lap around the track. Didn't jump a single thing. Held on for dear life. Came back. Couldn't feel my arms. I feel like we're going to... Handed it back and said, take this thing away. I don't like it. We're going to have Ethan actually come in eventually and talk about rider technique. Maybe in our next episode. But he's got some pretty good theories about why they don't ride well. Engine inertia, torque frame tension oh, all that sort of there's yeah, so many there's, things you can't so just things, take yeah. a, a fire i mean you can if you want to and it's cool but like you've got to be prepared that that's what it's going to be yeah but yeah the cr 593 that's going to be a really cool bike that's going to be are a we really, doing that full oem uh semi oem so that's got our kashima replica upper tubes in it mm. um we're going to do some tricky wheels and stuff like that for us but it's going to visually look like when you see it, it'll look oem ish yeah yeah it's going to have that style to it that yeah. 93 style to it yeah, yeah. Customers done all the right things. Frames been new rails put in it. We had the frame straight and fixed, repaired. It is exactly as it needs to be, which is a big thing that guys forget about. I think just, yep, strip them, blast them, powder coat them, build them. You can't do it. It doesn't work. It's it's how you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you do, isn't (laughs) it? That's all you do. Um, We've also got a 97, which is going to be dressed as a 94. Um, That was a little bit of a controversial bike. We won't get into those details too much. That's... The guy that we've done the, the nine, one two four yeah, one two yeah. five four the one two four five, the five, four. <laughs> one two five four, four, four this four. is where it is super duper motocross super duper motocross um, um, <laughs> that's going to be really cool because that's we're going to take even though it is a ninety seven very similar bikes very very similar bikes so they're going to be able to we're going to take that into a ninety four look an OEM ninety four look to match his one two five mm-hmm. we're going to do a fleet of four for that one there so that's going to be pretty cool um, I think you know we're just collecting parts. Frames getting repaired by Mr. Steve Martin at the moment because it was in pretty bad shape when Isn't we got after? He is. <laughs> You're a You're an idiot. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I'm um, I feel like they're rare. They are rare. When people say no, CR500, yeah, this one, you want it? <laughs> <laughs> when people say CR500s are rare, sorry guys, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but we could find you three of them tomorrow and if you really need to stop just down. Yeah. <laughs> the RM500, however, is a rare bike. There's not a great deal of those on the ground. It's only made for a couple of years. Oh, we're talking about my vintage. 90, yeah. I won't, Close I won't, to my vintage. Oh, yeah, I did mention that. But you've probably got a couple of friends that think you're of another vintage, don't, don't you? No, no one knows that. <laughs> so these are a big air cooled full floater conventional forks real 80s stuff real men were men sort of stuff yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) we're actually building this one for an engineer and we have done a couple of little episodes with him on our youtube about different bits and pieces um so he's going down titanium magnesium 
CAD design cards, yeah, all that sort of stuff. H2O. H2O. Yeah. H2O. That's what I was attacking with the die grinder this morning, the barrel H2O. and the cases <laughs> on that thing. So it might not even run again. We don't, don't know. Um, the other one's a cool little one, actually. We had a customer who wants an XR80, 1986 XR80. I've read one of those. Have you? <laughs> I feel like it's got that nos- the, that that nostalgic feel to it though, yeah. like that first bike you get on. No, you got the, the P Dub on the wall out yeah, there. Yeah, I got the P Dub. So you know what I mean. So there's and they're actually they haven't changed. You pointed it out. That front end on that thing is Thought out of a T is out of a CRF one ten. Yeah. That this is the same front end yeah. as my one ten. The no, the oh, XR80 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 80 from nineteen eighty six. So Honda have gone. You know what? We put it a works. stake in the ground. It this works. works. <laughs> this is where we're going for the next thirty plus years. We made way too many. Yeah, yeah. Put them in yeah. yeah, yeah. At least it's not an alloy frame. So that one's coming along really nicely. That's going to be OEM. So the customer's looking to keep, like, to relive his youth with that one. Yeah. Now this one. This is exciting. Yeah. Everyone's been moving this one around for a while. You've seen it now. You've looked at your notes. You know exactly the bike I'm talking about. Yeah. Big Rusty's, my old man's 1986 YZ250. Now, this is a hero bike for me. The photos are on the whiteboard at work yep. of his bike from the 80s when he was a younger, more motivated. Well, Big Rusty is Kane's dad in case yeah. we didn't go over that earlier. earlier. Yeah. Um, he's a mountain of a man. He's huge, right? That's why we call him Big Rusty. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, what? 68 kilos. <laughs> um, this is his bike we're going to restore. He wanted, what was his brief? Make sure it goes in a magazine. Yeah. So we're going to start printing our own magazines and <laughs> put it on the front cover. And- <laughs> there you go, done. Dad. It's done. Done. Yeah. Photo what it is now. We're, to make- we're going to touch on this a little bit late, a little bit in other episodes, but the 80s are the hardest years to restore. Yeah. They are impossible. So the 80s was a massive development cycle for dirt bikes, oh, right? So, just changed. so they went from being grass track, twin shot, <laughs> Mako leather hat sort of riding sort of things. Then they went, let's <coughs> let's do motocross. Okay, let's try this. Put a single, sh- shock, single in shock in the back. Yeah, and then we're going to change that single shock every year for the next four years. Oh, so any yeah. parts you need, none of the aftermarket are going to hold it's, them. It's not like buying a KDM, well, not now, but like, or a... The YZ. And they just change. Changed. Where you can like, literally just buy yeah, parts, parts everywhere that fit everything. all the year through to every single one. <laughs> yeah. So like anything from the that 1986 YZ, uh, YZ500, that 1986 <laughs> KX500 we just finished, that was that, a nightmare. How whole. how that even came together, I still don't know. Pipes, stuff like that. We couldn't get plastics for it, nothing. So The biggest part of that bike was, hey, man, can you pull this, this, and this off? Yep, sweet. Don't break any anything. Of it. Yeah. I'm like... Hey man, I just broke this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that chain slider that we got the last one that we could find, new old Don't stock that's it. now in two pieces? Yeah, that's I didn't I didn't mean it. I think he did. I didn't mean it. Like I literally, I don't even think I touched it. I think it just fell off. I, and that's the other broke. issue. You've got plastics and stuff that are brittle. Four thousand years yeah, old. Yeah. And yeah. we all know plastic manufacturing is hard for a lot of these things. So guys that are making, they just don't work. I'm sorry. I'm not going to name the company, but I'm sorry, but your plastics don't look good. They don't fit and they're the wrong color. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people might know what I'm this talking about then. Still, still, tanking. still, still tanking. Um, so that one's going to be pretty cool. All right. So we just want to touch on a little bit of a thing. People sort of ask us, what's a good entry-level restoration bike? CR500. <laughs> <laughs> really easy to do. Really cheap easy. to get parts can't for. Find them anywhere, can't find apparently. them. Um, YZs. Anything from 96 yeah, forward? YZ... Uh, the best. You can cut find, your teeth. Yeah. If you're parts everywhere. Yeah. Decent bike to ride. Like for you, if you wanted to go, hey, let's restore a bike. You want to take fun that you could get mm-hmm. parts for, and you wanted a little bit of nostalgia. The YZ, like, yeah. it it was a solid bike from '96 onwards, and it hasn't it's really had minor changes. Minor <laughs> changes. Yeah. It's had a frame change <laughs> and <a> plastic <laughs> ones. <laughs> ones on the YZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's changed. Oh yeah. The graphics, the graphics, they did. Bold new. Graphics. The same graphics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Black seat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, seat. Whoa. So if you wanted to get into and look, Yamaha have always made it. I've always believed that Japanese two strokes are always the cleanest feeling bikes. They they I I have always had this feeling. The power delivery of a YZ125 is R- rides a husky two stroke. Yeah. That's for sale if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I always think they're a good bike. Parts you can get anywhere. You can get engine parts when they go bang. That's what I would say, you know, entry level bike. Yeah, I agree. And if you've got more money to tip into a bike, early or mid 90s CRs 
If he, you can afford to buy one. He, yeah. Yeah, 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 well, that's the issue. Everybody right. wants Everyone wants one. Everyone wants one. Yeah. I, there's a few that's staying up for sale now at the moment. They're for sale for a lot longer. <laughs> I don't know. The market's Shit, doing something. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a lot of parts for them, though. Hmm. Right? If you're not convinced and committed to doing the OEM thing, which is romantic, great. If you guys want to go for and try and do a complete OEM build, I dare you to. And you will happily support it because Kane loves an OEM. I too. love OEM. There's two ways a bike should be restored. Oh, how go. God intended it and how the team intended it. <laughs> All right? Yeah, <laughs> um, and then how I do it is completely, completely different. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the CR 90 CR range, if you can get yourself into one, you can definitely get a lot of good aftermarket reproduction parts, graphics, plastics. Yeah. You get air boxes, tanks for you most of them. Get parts. You can actually get yeah. parts to really pull it you off. You really good quality Clark tanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You've got to you got to take the good with the bad sometimes yeah. with a lot no, of stuff. No, they're decent. It's just that weird mold mold line on it. Yeah. If you can Everything get if you can get past that, yeah. happy days. Other than that, you're paying two grand for a new old stock one if you can find one. Yep. Some guys got from an old Honda store that he had yep. back in nineteen ninety. Sat in his shed and he's like, yeah. oh, man. Dude, and you literally. know what the thing oh, is? It's God. two grand. Yes, it's still new old stock, but it's only half yellow because it's been sitting yeah. in the atmosphere yeah. for 30 something yeah. years or yeah. 20 years. Um, so yeah, that's our advice when it comes to sort of restoration, a little bit of restoration talk there if you're sort of looking at it. If you've got any ideas or any things that you want to know about that you're keen for us to talk about when it comes to restoration, yes, that is our bread and butter. Feel free to send us a message and let us know because we're more than happy to touch on any sort of subjects within that realm. We're sort of giving you some blanket sort of stuff today. First episode, we're going to sort of keep it fairly generic. Just about everything today. Pretty much. Just whatever. I have to cut it short. I'm going to be in an emergency Do you? Yeah, okay, so cool. I'll text you what's going on. Okay, good luck. I guess we Thank you. Do keys or anything? But... Uh, where are the keys? I have no idea. That's good. Well, good. I didn't open anything. Yeah, yeah. Nor did I close anything. Progress. All right. Continue. Good luck. Continue. Gozo, send, us, send us a text. We've lost Gozo. Gonzo's gone. Little Gonzo. Little Gonzo's gone. Um, so, oh, this is bad. This it's, is where it all turns this, to shit. This is where it all... He keeps things mediated. Yeah. <laughs> Me and this clown have no idea. This no, is up this bad. is bad. Yeah, this is not bad. good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so problems, cool stuff, whatever. The weekend. We had a good weekend. Like the, the singer? Who? The weekend. Oh, the weekend. It's already what? started. No, don't worry. I'll talk to Smack again. Okay. Um, the weekend. I'll stay out of music. Yeah, I think I know the code, but I'd probably forgot. Yeah, that's true. How good was the weekend? I think we all had a good weekend. It was raining. It was gonna. It looked like it was gonna unfold. Dude, I wore white gear in the rain. Yeah. Why did smart. you wear white gear in the rain? Shit. Oh, dude. See ya. Guys, I see ya, mate. Um. Oh, I'll- I'll drop those parts off thing and thank you. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, man. Thanks, Give dude. me more work. Yeah, more work that we don't really have enough to do. Um, dude, ride uh, ride the park. Oh my lord! Ride for How Park many MX. Cruise parks? Can you call ride park? <laughs> um, Cruisex. How good was it though? Like it was. We were driving out there, and it looked like it was going to start raining. <laughs> you didn't say it was going to be all that. Did you just drop your whole bike in for a Cerakote? <laughs> Pretty much, bro. Oh, uh, oh, those bearings I've got to take out. <laughs> um, Cruzix put it on for the weekend. Both yeah, days. I, you weren't I, about it. You I get a bit spongy about, when no, it comes to I rain. I wasn't about it on the way out there because I did, I do not like riding in the rain. And it's not even about riding in the rain. It's, it's about falling over your, in the rain? No, it's the water in your goggles thing. It drives me <laughs> nuts. You ever I, don't, I, don't race, I don't race, so I don't care to be like, oh, yeah, just race, like just pull tear off, do this. No. I don't have to ride in that shit. <laughs> so I just don't most of the time. You know what Ethan has been he's, he's been teaching me to ride in the slippery stuff. He's like, just do it. Just slippery's do it. Fine. Slippery's not slippery's fine. fine. Slippery's it's ACL not raining, man. man. Oh my god, you and your noodle rain. <laughs> Isn't it repaired yet? No, nah, it'd never be repaired. It's it's literally just rain. I do not want to ride in it. If the tracks are wet and there's no rain and it's stopped, yeah, sweet. But I just I don't like riding in yeah. the rain. Yeah, the rain, it's sort of it I sucked. mean it's it was dampener on everything. It was like, literally. It, literally. Yeah. Like not a good dampener, no, not no. a cruise tune dampener. No. <laughs> not a dead dampener. No. Um it was great though. Cruisex ended up and that's one of those places if it gets enough. I can water, say like if we didn't use Gozo's phone. Yeah, because it would be all gone. over. Yeah, yeah, it'd be all over. That was wild. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was wild. The joys of having a new baby at home, I think. Something you and I know not nothing about. about. Um so yeah, no, it was good. I think 
I, mean, I love that place. Dude, yeah. Cruzix always puts it on oh, though. Everybody, well, well, not everybody, but you get people that, oh, I don't want to drive two hours. Like, I don't, I don't really give a shit about driving two hours. It doesn't bother me. But I think you've oh. got to, if you're really, if you're really committed to motocross or if you're committed to the sport and that's what you want to do, Cruzix, you've got to drive. We're not, it's not like we've, we're all going to have tracks in our backyard. No. We're, we're not all going to wake up and just roll out of bed and go motor. No. It doesn't happen. No. You've got to go places. Yeah, you know, 100%. For us, most tracks are minimum hour and a half each way. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Chesney Vale's what? Three hours each way. way. Far, but it, we, we do go. it. We do it. We, we just get up at five. Get up at zero and start it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, we, we definitely take your vans on yeah, those trips. <laughs> you got race ace. Not, <laughs> not, not really trustworthy. Not, not trustworthy. No. Um, but yeah, no, we had a great weekend. Um, look, it's just... Going back again, we, that like testing the new field was... It's fun. And I think that's going to be the place. Like, Cruzix is sand, right? It's deep sand and it always puts a lot more stress. Well, not deep sand, but it's it's, it's a, a weird a, kind of It's sand. not like beach sand. It's not like no. Rose. Um, yeah, Rosebud's is a different. totally different world. But for people who want to ride sand but don't want to ride beach sand, Cruzix is unreal. Like, yes. I, I love it out there, honestly. Um, you know, regardless of what people say about there's no jumps, there's this, there's that. Like, man, just enjoy it. Yeah. Like, it's you don't, so fun. Jumping is great, but ninety percent of a motocross track is corners. Yeah, which so if you want to go fast, <laughs> you got to get like that sorted. Because it's teaching me to turn. Yeah, I can't turn you've got to turn. Jumping's great. Doing sick whips, awesome. Yeah. But you've got to be able to turn, and that's one thing Cruzix is great for. Yeah. Um, some cool stuff we've been using. We're so, like I said, we've been started on with the Elf fuels. We're, we're you know getting a lot of support from them, and we're helping them out with testing this new fuel for the the, the motorcycle world because they've traditionally been motor car racing mm. here in Australia. Anyway, we yeah. we used to get um, stuff from race fuels when we're doing V8 supercars, when we're doing GT3 racing. But you know, it's like we touched on earlier. I feel like having a price point fuel that everyone can get into is. Is is unreal? Do you well, know what I mean? Like it, everyone wants race fuel, but they're too scared yeah, to, to, to commit it's to it. Expensive. Yes. Obviously, no one wants to spend big dollars on on. Well, I mean, no one likes paying money for fuel as it is. Like we put fuel in the car. No one enjoys putting fuel in their car. No, it's expensive. We do it because we have to. Um, the bike side of things, obviously, we still have to put fuel in our bikes to make the bikes go. But everybody. Oh, I feel like people that ride dirt bikes and ride a lot, there's always that little inkling in the back of their head, like, ooh, race fuel, race yeah. fuel. You, you smell can smell it, it and you're like, ooh, you smell it, you yeah. see people, you know, dumping VP and stuff into their bikes and this and that. And you always see dudes out the track with a big, like, you know, a 20 litre or a 10 litre drum or whatever it is, and they're like dumping it in their bikes. And everybody does that little, ooh, I want to run some Can race I justify fuel. What's the yeah. price and how can I make it work? But then they go, oh, how much is that? And oh, you go, it's 16 oh, bucks a litre. Dollars a liter. And you go, you know what? Maybe I'll just run 98. 98 is great. But the Elf product, there is a product. They've got their 102, which is a, a replacement for 98. Doesn't yeah. need well, jetting. That's what we were running. That's, and now we're running on their test fuel, which we're going to, they've asked us to sort of keep it under yeah, under wraps. Yeah. But that, and we're going to respect that. That's fine. But their 102, if you go down to Dandenong here in Victoria, there's other fuels. I think they're getting a station put in in Phillip Island. Um, Eastern Creek in uh, New South Wales or Sydney I don't know has one. I just know about A lot of those cars, if you Google is. race fuels, they'll be able to show, tell you where to go. I'll look them up on their Instagram. Um, but yeah, so you can put it in there. If you take your own jerry can, it's $4.95 a litre. And I think that's a fairly reasonable yeah. price when you're a hobbyist, when you're wanting the best for your products, you're wanting that extra performance because it's a pleasure to spend money on your hobbies. That's why oh, they're hobbies. Why do you think we spend buttloads of cash on new gear and new helmets? Absolutely. Bikes every two years and blah, blah, blah. Yep. Why not just do it on the fuel as well? Exactly right. And look, it's an extra added cost, yes, but if you look at how much fuel you would use over the long term, it's probably not that much more dramatic. So that's why it's it's just a great thing and we're working really closely with them. Hopefully we can get it happening. Hopefully we can get into the racing circuit because we've already had some teams, some well, guys yeah. and stuff talking to us. Hey, we've how we a lot do? of people interested in it, which is awesome. Um, you know, and if we can get like, we're, like well, you know, we said before, we're weekend guys um, and we love using it. So if we can get it, into like we can pr promote it as weekend guys and then it goes into the the racing world that's even better not just well not just for us because we get to promote it as well but for elf and for race fuels because they've made this fuel 
for Australia. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not like they've just made it and they don't care and it's race going fuels, worldwide. No, this is for Australia. Race, fuel. race fuels went out and they said, we need, you know, can we, I think it was, it was developed for a car racing category, but they had requirements for MA. And, and we're not going to talk too much about it because it's still a lot of under the wraps, but yeah. it hopefully, fingers crossed, will pass the laws and rules that we need to. But however, there's a lot more guys who are hobbyists than there are on the grid. Yeah. So if you are a hobbyist and you want a really good fuel, Elf is definitely 100% yeah. the fuel to and it smells use. great. It smells amazing. I've been like, slowly cracking this cap every now and again because this still has a fraction of, of some goodness in, in the bottom. Um, so the air fuel ratio in this drum is perfect at the moment. <laughs> what have you seen? Bike fuel stuff. You're the custom guy out of uh, our little group of madness. Apparently. Apparently I'm the, the design guy. Well, um, you are a tattoo artist, so I, I'm hoping for all your clients out there that you have some sort of design. I just rip everybody else's stuff. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, your RM was the biggest one. The bike world. What's yeah, happening at the moment? Builds. Um, London's doing a cool thing. Like, we got Broke to Built happening at the moment. That's yeah, got Nam some wild uh, stuff. Cameron Namila is doing a Broke to Built again this year. Um, I haven't really paid too much attention to it, but the one thing that I did see was Clint Lund's bike. Uh, he's a YouTuber as, as well uh, and bike builder, mechanic, all that kind of stuff. He's built a, a bunch of cool bikes. Um, I think he built like a, a YZRM 500 hybrid sort hybrid of thingy. thing. I can't remember exactly what it was. I've seen him you know, build some K, like a KX500 that was pretty cool. Yep. Um, but the, the recent thing that he's built is, uh, I think it's a 96 CR250 Evo with, I don't know if you guys know what it is, what, what the Evo, Evo L, I think they call it's it. It's got the, the big side yeah, panels on the side of it's it. It's like got these big plastic, it's basically like the whole bike is covered in plastics. Um, and it's... They were super popular in, oh, not... That's, they thought they were going to be <laughs> super, super popular in the 90s. But they, they did. They and overheated. they're really hard to come across now. Yes. Um, but the one that he's just built looks... It looks amazing. Really it looks cool. really good. Yeah, yeah. Colorways, the whole lot looks The rims, great. like he, he went super bold. Were they dub? I honestly don't know the brand. Um, but purple wheels on it and it looks wild. Like I, I'm, I'm about it. Um, I tend to enjoy doing things a little different and yep. he's definitely done something really different there. Really different. And that was a crazy thing with those plastics. So they were actually designed in the 90s for more sponsorship space. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah, why they even, didn't. I didn't even yeah. know that. So you'd, no, they'd no, put them on the bikes to try and get more logos, more branding on them, but they just collect mud, they'd overheat, <laughs> they get burnt by it. They were just, and they didn't really like back then, I guess you look at them, you're like, ah, Imagine yeah. You quickly okay. destroy them. Like, Imagine Marigold well, on so, those things. Coming back to that, like Ethan got a brand spanking new <laughs> gas gas on the weekend. And it's, it's got about half a minute on it and he's just <laughs> destroyed it. But gripping everywhere, the thing looks fast. Guys <laughs> destroy fast stuff. Guys fast guys yeah. yeah, and that's they need to. That's them. That's the, but like it. imagine like yeah like imagine <coughs> putting Tomac on that thing and going all right man go race a two thirty minute motos. Yeah, he come back the, the plastics would be off. That it'd be holes yeah. in it. It'd be the melted to the exhaust. Absolutely, it'd be destroyed. Absolutely, and that's and that was why they sort of went away from. They just never <laughs> popped off. But like, like all hey that, guys, this uh, was actually a really, really bad, shitty idea. Really Let's just idea. not do it anymore. So we'll make five of them in thirty years' time. Guys are going to pay a fortune for them because you can no longer get them. Um, well, Gozo had a little segment we're going to do on fitness and talk, but I think we might sort of wait on that one and open yeah. up a little bit more because that's a fairly deep subject. I think it's overdone at the moment. Well, I'm calling – I think people are way – there's way too much going on within our industry from a racing side when it comes to fitness, nutrition, everyone's an expert, all that know, sort of man. stuff. Like I don't the, know, man. I don't know, man. The whole fitness world has changed over – Globally, not even just not, our not sport. Just, yeah, not just motocross wise. Like everything has changed. Like the whole mentality of, you know, even bodybuilding. Not not that I'm a bodybuilder of any way, shape, or form. Um, but the odd mentality of, you can only have chicken and rice and broccoli and chicken and blah 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 and this and now it's like macros this, fats that and blah blah this and you got to have that many carbs and yeah, it's just everything's so it's more everything's science based now and. I feel like I feel like there's too many areas for people to be taken advantage of with well, bad information. Well, I don't know because it's like it's hard to say what's good information. It's hard to say what's bad information because everything's yeah. different for everybody's every different. Person. Every single human exactly. being is different. Every, every everyone's body is different. different. There's a base guideline for things, 
And it, 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 well, I guess that's just in life in general because like whatever you do, there's a base guideline for anything that you're going to approach. Yeah. But there's always other avenues that you can take. So the fitness thing. I, I do you think know. people are overtraining? I feel there's a level of overtraining. I think people run what, like that. in motocross or just yeah. in general. Yeah, it's like not in general. Like in motocross, probably there's probably because it's a lot of bike. There's a lot of time on the bike to be fast. Now you have to be, you have to give up school and you have to just moto. Yeah. Well, again, it comes back like look at uh, Jason Anderson training with Alden Baker. Uh, yeah, Alden Baker didn't like it. Yeah. Too much structure. Too much this. Too much that. Steps away. Goes faster. Goes faster. Yeah. Starts enjoying himself more. More yeah. time on the bike, having more fun. And I think blah, that's blah, blah. these guys are we need to bring the fun back into this sport. Yeah, but then there's the people like, well, on the opposite end of the spectrum, Cooper Webb, Alden Baker, wins a championship, steps away, loses championship. Does garbage, comes back, does well again. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know. I, I get it. I get it. Some guys need different things. Like, it's it, like it's, what do you what do you do? There's no there's no direct line to the checkered flag. No, it's always isn't. like this guy goes that way, yep. that guy goes that way, they meet in the middle, and then whoever is at the checkered first wins. wins. And look, I'm going to say, like, we'll probably leave this for another episode because this is probably, we're probably coming to a close on the first one here, I think. Um, I think we're going to look at what was motocross, how fun it was. Back in the day, and I'm like I said, I'm always stuck. I'm stuck in a certain era, and to what it is now, it's very business. It's very regimented. It's very clinical. It's all that sort of stuff, and I feel like that's not what the sport was meant to be about. But it has changed. But we'll like we might discuss that in a later date. But I think that's probably us for yeah. today. I think that's that's been a good starting point. Thank you guys for those of you who joined it, joined us. Join, it is Jaundice. definitely the for those of you that have joined us. Joined us. Um. We're really sorry. <laughs> um, for those of you who have joined us on Instagram Live, thank you very much. Your feedback will be greatly appreciated on any sort of anything you want to yeah. hear about, want we, to know we about. We literally have no idea what we're doing. We're this. winging this. If we you saw it. what it was 10 minutes before we pressed and go oh, live, man. it was wild. Um, so, yeah, if there's any any feedback, like we're happy to take it on board. If there's, We're not that sensitive. No, like... Talk, if it's rubbish, if tell us it's rubbish. Shit about us, talk shit. At least you know it's it's some form of feedback. Yeah. Um, Remember, any publicity is good publicity. Well, yeah, and any agree. feedback is still good. Good feedback. feedback. Um, we'll decipher it if it's, <laughs> if it's if you're just going to shit can us. We'll decipher what we need to out of out of out of we'll it. bits and pieces, <laughs> snip it together, and then <laughs> make, put it on a video and make it look really good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you guys are what make us look better because we need the advice. Like we we don't know. What no. The no idea. Is. Like um, as I said, we sort of started shit talking about doing a podcast. Let's do a podcast, yeah. okay? If it works. It works. it works. If you want to see more of it, say you want to see more of it. If you think it was absolutely terrible, and we have no place, we're, on we're not in the podcast world. YouTube, Spotify, Anyify, whatever, whatever tube, fi, any hi-fi, you, iPhone, <laughs> you, whatever, whatever. Let us know. Let us know because yeah, we're literally winging this, and we're hoping that we plan on doing it as a weekly thing. And obviously, we want to get better week to week. Um, like anything we do, restoration, everything we do, we always we do better improve. the next time. Exactly. So, you know, all jokes aside, we if you've got any feedback, yeah. let us know because it is very important to us. This is our baby, and this is this is definitely a passion for both of us. So, and it's just something that we really. Because I pretty work. much don't want to work. I just want to do a podcast and just live the dream. <laughs> so, let if you can really make that help, happen, help guys. Me help you make that happen. <laughs> um, Next episode, I think we're going to have the elusive Ethan on to have a chat about rider skill and what's happening in the off-road world. So stay tuned for that. That'll be really good. And we're going to try and always bring you sort of some sort of structure to this podcast and, and what we've got going on. But my name's Kane. This is Marshall. Thank you again, guys. It's been absolutely fantastic. And like I said, it's any feedback's great. Welcome to the Popscast. Time. The Popscast. <laughs> <laughs>